Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Ethan here. Um, I'm actually pretty very excited. Um, so, just like a couple minutes ago, um, I got a new channel. So, we have my Santa Finder Ethan channel, the one I'm videoing right now. And then I start a new channel, um, which is Santa Finder's Vlogs. Um, it doesn't have any videos uploaded on it, but I'm pretty sure I might get a video tonight or tomorrow on my vlogs. It's just a channel all about vlogs, so. On November 26, 2021, James Crumbly and his 15-year-old son, Ethan Crumbly, went to a store in Oxford, Michigan. While at this store, James purchased a handgun for his 15-year-old son, Ethan. Now, James is saying that this was Ethan's early Christmas present and Ethan was ecstatic. 15-year-old Ethan later posted his handgun on his Instagram account with the caption, Just got my new beauty today with the heart eyes emojis. Later, his mother, Jennifer Crumley, also posted the weapon on her social media, saying mom and son day testing out his new Christmas present. Jennifer and her son, Ethan, they also went to a shooting range over the Thanksgiving holidays. Now, after the holidays were over, Ethan returned to class as usual. Now, as Ethan returned to class, his teacher did notice some things that were different. Ethan's attitude was different, and while he was in class, he was searching questionable things on his phone. As Ethan's teacher walked past his desk, that's when she saw him searching ammunition. Now, this was very alarming to Ethan's teacher. She notified school officials and the school contacted Jennifer Crumbly. They tried to reach Jennifer by email and by phone, but they didn't get a response. Later, Jennifer would text Ethan saying, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn not to get caught. Later that night, Ethan recorded videos of himself talking about killing students at his high school. He also wrote in his journal detailing his desires to murder his classmates. On the next day, Ethan goes to school as usual, but on this day, he brings his early Christmas present in his book bag. While in class, Ethan's teacher discovered some horrific drawings on his desk. Ethan drew a picture of a semi-automatic handgun pointing at the words, the thoughts won't stop, help me blood everywhere also at the top of his drawing he wrote the words my life is useless and the world is dead the drawings were so graphic school officials had a meeting with his parents the same day the school gave ethan's parents 48 hours to provide counseling to ethan after the meeting his parents declined to take him home they wanted him to stay in school so ethan returned to class after Ethan was allowed to return to class, surveillance video from the school's camera show what happened next. Right before 12.51 p.m., Ethan could be seen with his backpack and then one minute later, he can be seen coming out of the bathroom with the same backpack but with a gun in hand. Ethan then began to walk down the hallway and deliberately started aiming the gun at students and firing his weapon. After students began to run and try to escape, Ethan then began to go down the hallway and go inside of classrooms shooting at students who couldn't escape. This entire incident went on for another five minutes until he went into another bathroom. After the deputies arrived, he then sat down and he surrendered. Students barricaded themselves in the classroom, some even jumping out of the window to try to escape what Ethan was doing. Ethan had just murdered four people. To witness you, we are seeing uh, students assembling out in the parking lot uh, as they were told to do to come over here to find a safe place to reunite with their parents. Uh, it's really mayhem out on Lapeer Road. So when you get to coming up to Oxford High School, which is, by the way, the school is sort of a stone's throw uh, that way, east of where I am, sort of behind the Myers where the school is and the street that I'm standing along right here is a street that will take you to Oxford High School. So what you've got is really uh, frantic parents who were told to come up to Meyer to meet up with their kids. I interviewed a young lady named Savannah, a 17 year old student. She was sitting in class at Oxford High School. Her boyfriend said something is wrong. 
she heard gunfire. They were told to hide in their room. They have gone through mass shooter training here at Oxford High School. And I guess today that training perhaps paid off. Uh, they hid, they knew what to do, and then they knew how to get out safely when police told them they could do so. Um, the wind has picked up. It is a frigid. I'm getting on the bus mm -hmm. or meet me here, that nature, and that wasn't happening today. And, and why was that? Um, was there an I, uneasy feeling about the yeah, kids? Yeah, he was just, yes, yeah, that was just an uneasy feeling that he had and didn't want to go. I, I just got like a little feeling that like, when I got up today, like, I text me and my little cousins because I'm a senior. And, like, they're, like, a little bit younger than me. So I text them, and I was like, is anybody up? Who's going to school? Like, get up. Let's go. We're going to school. No one responded. So I'm like, Man, this, this is weird. Like, we never do this. Like, either, like, somebody's sick or, like, something's, something's wrong. What so I'm was, like, yeah, what was worrying everybody? There was, there have been some uh, some ominous threats posted in recent days. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. That it is. I've been hearing the threats too, and it's like, you know, kids they, they play around and say, oh, we're gonna shoot up the school or this. You don't supposed to play around with that. Right. Like, this is serious. You can't do that. So I mean, like, it's a lot of stuff that's been going on. You know, this school it's been it's been tragic, and it's like, I don't even know. It's just. It's, when you heard about what was going on at school today, you weren't there, but then you learned there's an active shooter. What was going through your mind? My first thing when I got up, I got up, I put my shoes on, put my coat on, I told my mom, come on, let's go. I have a friend. He's more like my cousin. I think of him as my cousin. And I say he's in there. He's the only one that went to school. And I need to get up there to get him out of that school because I don't want anything to happen to him. After news reports started circulating about a shooting at Oxford High School around 1.22 p.m., Jennifer Crumbly texted her son, Ethan, don't do it. Around 1.37 p.m., that's when James Crumbly called 911 to report a gun was missing from his house, and he believed that his son might have been the school shooter. But by that time, it was too late. Ethan had already taken the lives of four students, 16-year-old Tate Meyer, 14-year-old Hannah Juliana, 17-year-old Madison Baldwin, and 17-year-old Justin Schilling had all died from their injuries. 15-year-old Ethan Crumley was charged with terrorism causing death, four counts of first-degree murder, seven counts of assault with the intent to murder, and 12 counts of possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony. He was facing a life sentence. I am absolutely sure after reviewing the evidence that it isn't even a close call. It was absolutely premeditated. A mountain of evidence. Investigators in Oxford say 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly planned yesterday's deadly attack on his classmates. Four students were killed. Seven other people were hurt, including a teacher. Today, the teen suspect was charged with murder and terrorism. The prosecutor says charges could be coming for the boy's parents. The gun used in yesterday's attack was bought by the teen's father just days before the shooting. We've also learned the suspect was in trouble at school the day before and the morning of the shooting. His parents were called to the school just hours before the violence started. We have since learned that the schools did have contact with the student the day before and the day of the shooting for behavior in the classroom that they felt was concerning. In fact, the parents were brought in the morning of the shooting and had a face-to-face -face meeting with the school. The content of that meeting obviously is part of the investigation, but we did not learn of that meeting nor of the content of that meeting until after the shooting and during this investigation. Even though Ethan Crumbly was taken into custody, on December 3rd, the Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald made an announcement that nobody expected. She would be charging James and Jennifer Crumbly with involuntary manslaughter in relation to the mass shooting that Ethan Crumbly perpetrated. Four counts of involuntary manslaughter, you guys, for Jennifer and James. Now, what's so crazy is when it was time to go arrest them, they were nowhere to be found. Y'all, they said, forget my son, forget what he got going on. We're finna make a run for it. And that's what they attempted to do. Y'all, they drained their bank accounts of about $4,000 and they got out of there, but they didn't make it far before somebody noticed their car. 
Now, James and Jennifer were taken into custody, you guys. And like I said before, they're charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter. Something that we've never seen before in school shootings. Sheriff says the couple was in an art studio and it wasn't until 1.30 in the morning they were taken into custody. We believe they were assisted in that uh, location to get there, to get in. And uh, we're gathering that information and we're going to have the totality of that done fairly soon uh, and present that to our prosecutor for potential charges for either uh, um, aiding and abetting or uh, obstruction of justice. James, Jennifer, and Ethan Crumbly are all under the same roof again, but now at the Oakland County Jail. The son and both parents, they are segregated each individually in isolation. Uh, we have uh, advanced watch on them. While the Crumbly's attorneys argue the couple plan to turn themselves in, the sheriff says. We were out actively looking for them, working with our partners, and they were taken into custody before that question was asked or answered. Were they actually going to do it? I don't know. But given that they were hiding in a warehouse in Detroit, it certainly raises my eyebrows. And now that all three are at the Oakland County Jail, the sheriff wants to reassure the community that him and the prosecutor are working glove in hand is what he said to hold this family accountable. And if you have any information about the shooting or the. So Jennifer and James Crumley, they're in jail and they're both facing a $500,000 cash bond which let's be honest, none of them can make. So they keep going to court to try to get this bond lowered because they're trying to get out of jail. While they're in court, you guys, they basically are making a mockery out of the whole situation. Jennifer is sending like little love signals to James. She's sending him hearts. She's basically blowing him kisses all while they're being arraigned. There was literally no remorse for anything that happened. Now, they just had an arraignment yesterday, you guys, and they basically had people come testify about things that were going on in their life before this took place, the shooting. Amanda Holland, who worked in the same real estate office as Jennifer Crumbly, is saying that Jennifer and James were both having an affair. She's saying that Jennifer and James were on the verge of divorce. And did she tell you who that person was? No. And did she tell you when she saw that person? Um, one, uh, after, after the fact, one time she did, yes. Okay, tell, tell, tell me about that. Um, there was a point where, um, I had noticed that she wasn't there in the morning, and she had mentioned that she had seen a man, um, in the morning before, during work hours. What do you mean she, she, you noticed she wasn't there? Was, is, was it before she was supposed to come into work? Um, it would, I typically got in after her. Um, I would notice that she she had been there, her light was on and everything, but she was not there. Um, and it would be about an hour until she I would see her afterwards. Did you ask her about that or did she just? I didn't ask, but she had mentioned, you know, errands at first. And then um, she had mentioned about a week after that, that it was, she was seeing somebody else. And where, where would she, did she say where she would go during those hours? Um, she said that this person would pick her up and they would go across the street from our office. To where? Costco. And did she say what they were doing? Um, not directly, no. Okay. Now, it's being said that Jennifer will leave on her breaks to go see this mystery man that she was having an affair with. And it's being said that after she would get off of work, she would not go home and tend to her child. She would literally go to tend to her horses that she had. Now, Amanda Hollins also testified that Jennifer referred to Ethan as weird. And she's saying that Jennifer knew that Ethan was troubled, but Jennifer just decided to do her own thing. Now, investigators also testified that they saw text messages from Ethan to Jennifer, basically telling his mom that he was seeing demons and that he had video and pictures of demons in the home now this is just showing that jennifer knew that her son was troubled she knew her son was depressed and she chose not to pay attention to her son all of these things plus the fact that he was drawing these pictures you guys it shows that she knew something was wrong with ethan so I'm not surprised by the things that Amanda testified just because Jennifer's attitude while she was in court, like everything surrounding the shooting that Ethan did, she had no remorse. 
them going on the run and trying to leave Ethan behind while he basically deals with the consequences of his actions, it shows what type of parents they are. Now, as of right now, Ethan has been charged with the deaths of the four victims from the shooting in Oxford. And Ethan's lawyer is saying that he's trying to plead insanity. Now, you guys, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was like, this kid is out of his mind if he thinks that pleading insanity is going to help him. But hearing the testimony from Jennifer's arraignment, it really does seem like this child was extremely disturbed. And there were so many signs leading up to this school shooting that he was going to do something. And it's almost like the parents didn't care. They handed him the gun in order to carry out whatever he had on his mind. Now, you guys, I'm going to keep y'all updated on everything that's going on with this case, with the parents' case and with Ethan's case. I'm very curious as to see the trial, you guys. I really want to see how Ethan plays out in this whole trial. And I want to see how a judge responds to the parents and their actions and how they're acting in court. Now, you guys, please make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe. I'm going to be back on YouTube now, so please make sure you help your girl out. Blow this up. You can share it on all platforms, and I'll have another video for you guys soon.